Hello, everyone. Welcome back for a brand new TIFF 2019 interview here at the Supper Suite. We are talking to some of the filmmakers behind the movie Mosul. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. I was telling you before, I cannot wait to catch your movie. And it's a very big deal for you because this is a feature directorial debut. So first off, why make this story your first feature? And also, can you give everybody a brief synopsis of what the movie is about? Because most people out there will not have heard of this just sure, yet. Sure, sure. Um, I can kind of answer them both at once. Uh, it was an article that was sent to me that Luke Mogelson wrote for The New Yorker um, about this group of people who, up until I read that article, I didn't know existed. And they're remarkable. Um, and it's about this Nineveh SWAT team, the only unit that hasn't retreated in the fight against ISIS in Mosul. And I was struck by how brutal the existence is, how they make it work, how they're they kind of live their lives minute by minute. Um, the criteria to get on the SWAT team itself is, is fairly brutal. Um, you have to have lost somebody to ISIS or been wounded by them, and most every member of the SWAT team claims both. Um, and so I just, before I even finished the article, I was kind of in my gut, knew that I certainly wanted to write it because that's how it was sent to me, but I would write it if I could also direct it. Um, because I just, you know, I, it, it struck me there's a great opportunity here for a larger audience to feel the same way about these people after watching a movie that I felt after reading the article about them. Um, and there's a, you know, it, it, it hit this thing that I look for in everything that we are so much more alike than we are different, you know, regardless of language the version of God we worship, where we're born, what continent we're living on. Decent human beings everywhere want some of the same fundamental things for the people they love. So I, yeah, I, I, like I said, within the first few pages, I was desperate to do it um, because it grabbed those those things in me that I'm always looking for in a project. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the audition process now and looping these two yeah. into your film because I was also obviously reading up and an all Arabic cast using the dialect as well. It sounds like a, it could be a big challenge for you when yeah. you don't speak the language, but it also sounds like you guys made the right decision. Uh, uh, without a doubt. Um, I and, and initially, I think it struck a lot of people as a huge challenge. I think it's the only way to do a movie like this. Um, so we went truly all around the world looking for this talent that we have in the cast. Uh, we couldn't get anyone directly out of Iraq because we pre-production is right when the travel ban madness was happening in the United States. Um, so everything was kind of frozen. We, we couldn't get them out of Iraq, and I think if we could have, getting them into Morocco was a months long proposition. So we went everywhere. Um, Adam is you know, from France, he's Tunisian. Suhail was born and raised in Baghdad, but now lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was a refugee and made it to the United States. Uh, we have a kid from Detroit, we have five from Amman, Jordan, uh, we had people from Egypt, uh, from Iraq, um, and it was just a question of <coughs> can we, in this diaspora, can we find, you know, 12, 14 really great people for the SWAT team? Uh, and, I, and I think we did that. And it was literally uh, Sarah Finn and Lara Tala and Amon Jordan, it was a global effort, and I think they, yeah, they did a spectacular job. I cannot wait to see everybody in action in this movie. So, Hale, I was reading a little bit about your career overall and just like the highs, making it in America. What was it like having this script and this opportunity cross your path at this point in your career? Thank you for uh, everything. Uh, I think uh, it's really is a, a good opportunity for us, like in Arab actors in. Uh, and this is, I think, it's the first time it's happening in uh, in Hollywood. They they have a movie for uh, they did it in, in all in Arabic language, 
uh, and they choose like all the Arabic characters in Thailand. This is the first time it's happened, I think, like that, and it was really great, great thing for us, and not uh, not just for uh, for us, it's for all the Arabic actors too. That's what I think. Uh, it's uh, I think it's a great. And Matthew, he did a great job in this uh, movie, and every, everybody did a great job. All the uh, production, all the producers, everybody did the hard work for this movie to make him successful. If you had to name one person on the crew of this movie that made a difference in your day that you might not have expected, who would it be? It could be anyone from a PA to someone at craft service, anything at all. That's a good question. I, I, I can't say any name, but I, I say all of them. All of them. When I saw the movie, I say, oh my God, everybody did a great job. Like from the beginning, the first thing when they cast in us, I think, after that, we have the boot camp for three weeks. Three weeks, right, Mike? Three weeks. Three weeks boot camp. It was great. They helped us a lot to do our job, like uh, when we're shooting, like the movement, how, how we can use the, the weapons, how we can clean the rooms, uh, cross the street, everything. It, it's great. It's great. Everybody, like, uh, very helpful. I love hearing that. And Adam, I was reading that a whole lot of people auditioned for this role, so you're the one who scores it. How do you celebrate after you find out you got the gig? How did I celebrate? Yeah. Oh, well, I was... Language uh, lessons. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just started working just after, so it was uh, the both emotion, you know, like I was super happy and excited, and at the same time I said, here we go now, you know, just get into it. So it was, uh, yeah, I was, it was a blast. Yeah, I was super happy. Now let's make Matthew blush a little right now. What is it about him as an actor's director that makes him someone special? Oh, where do I start? Uh, first of all, I have to say that as, um, as Arabs, and fr I'm, I'm French Arab, but I, I, I grew up with the Arab culture. First of all, I was struck by everything he knew. He knew more than most of us on, on details. The, the, the work he did, first of all, was such a gigantic work. On, and I, 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 can, I can tell you, I, I know a lot of Arabs that didn't know everything he knew and the details he knew. The hard work was extraordinary. So first of all, it's, it's, a, it's a blast to begin working. And then, I mean, artistically, we just uh, he's just... I mean, he got a great personality. He's super intelligent, so we don't need to talk a lot. He really quickly understands what we want to do. He's op super open to ideas. And in the same time, he knows what, when to say no, which is really important, I think. So you, can, you, you know where you're going. So, I mean, just, I don't, don't want to make him blush, but he's literally intelligent, humble, a uh, hard worker. And, uh, no, I, I mean, it was just great, great, great. All qualities you want in a director, you, <laughs> and and he, he never 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 yelling in the in the set. No, that, yeah. that, that, no. that's a great thing. No, uh -huh. which is something being a Carnahan that I wasn't oh, yeah. yelling. <laughs> that's all I've known. <laughs> this sounds yeah. like an extremely ambitious project on so many levels. If you had to isolate one particular scene where you're like, I don't know if we could pull this off, yeah. and then you did, and it just felt super great. Yeah. What would that scene be? Um. I think the uh, there's a there's kind of a penultimate attack on a base that was huge, um, and initially, when we started kind of planning it, I thought you know, it was it was it's over the course of several days. It's a coordinated assault where the team splits in two, um, and I that one was daunting, but I think thankfully it came at the end of the shoot. So I kind of by the time we got there. I think I, I, I knew much more what I was actually doing. And uh, again, these guys, they don't need to be told more than once. And we would just run through it until everybody felt good. We had great kind of technical advice uh, on hand at all times to make this look. I mean, my thought going in is, and it kills me that I keep you know hearing people call it an action movie. It's an action movie insofar as like, we wanted to get that exactly right 
mirroring what's in the article and what I've heard directly from some of the members of the SWAT team and other people who've been in combat. I, I wanted it to be as frenetic and as terrifying as that. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I do think that that scene, initially daunting, I think we, we covered it uh, really well. It might be one of my favorite scenes in the movie, but that, that's the one that sticks out as being kind of the most daunting, yeah. I cannot wait to see all of this. Thank you guys so much for your time Thank you today. Very much. Thank you. Keep an eye out for it, guys. I can't wait to catch Mosul myself, and you should keep an eye out for it, too. As always, we must thank our special sponsor for making all these interviews happen. It is Nordstrom Canada. Thank you to you guys. Do not leave this video without liking and sharing it, and stay tuned because we're going to have more from TIFF 2019 coming your way soon.